Hello and welcome to this screencast showing a couple examples of how we can use the second fundamental theorem of calculus to differentiate uh, functions defined in terms of integrals or just to work with functions defined in terms of integrals. So let's start with the most um, elementary application of the second fundamental theorem of calculus. Here we have a function that we're differentiating, right? So this is the piece we're taking the derivative of. And this is a function defined by a definite integral from a constant to the variable x that we're using as the variable we want our derivative with respect to. And the integrand here is continuous from 2 to x as long as x is bigger than 1. And so we'll uh, just make a note here. Yeah, x greater or equal 1 for this to make sense, otherwise we're a little bit worried here. But other than that, the second fundamental theorem just says that we evaluate that derivative by taking the variable and plopping it into the integrand. In other words, it says that um, this function, this integral function, is an antiderivative for the integrand with x, our variable of differentiation, substituted in. Now here we have to be a little more careful. Um, as long as t isn't negative, uh, this will be perfectly well defined because then we can avoid any problems with division by zero in the integrand here. Um, But mm, the second FTC says that we need to go from a constant to our variable. So let's use a property of definite integrals here, the one that says we can switch the limits of integration at the expense of a minus sign. And now let's use the constant multiple rule for derivatives to pull out the minus sign. And now notice there's nothing magical about x or t or their roles. Here I'm saying I'm taking the derivative with respect to t. My upper limit is the variable t and my integrand, the dummy variable here, is u. Cool. FTC still applies uh, and it tells us that this piece is just that derivative works out to be the integrand with t substituted for u. All right, now this one, even though it's got an integral and a derivative, isn't really a second FTC. This is going to come down to the first fundamental theorem of calculus, uh, because what we're saying here is we need to use the first fundamental theorem, and to do that we need find an antiderivative for That guy. Well, okay, if I differentiate t sine of e to the t cubed, I get the derivative of that as the derivative. So an antiderivative is that function. So we'll use since t sine of e to the t cubed is an antiderivative for the derivative with respect to t of t sine of e to the t cubed. And we generally would rather write this in this form. There we go. And notice this comes back to our same idea that we're getting almost an inverse relationship between differentiation and integration here. We just get this extra constant piece. All right. Well, now here we've got something a little bit fancier going on here. Notice that the upper limit of integration here is not just x. And the fundamental theorem says I apply, the second FTC applies if that upper limit is the variable that we're differentiating with respect to, not just something that has that variable in it. 
So let's uh, take a look here. Um, I want to define a function like this. Oh, and we'll sanity check our integrand here and say, uh, yeah, the thing we're putting into the logarithm is always positive since t to the fourth is always positive, uh, or non-negative, and three is, is positive. So we're good to go even when sine is negative. We're not uh, going to be in trouble here. Well, so the second FTC does tell us this, the derivative of this function, big F, is the natural log of 3 plus x to the fourth. Well, let's see. So this is really saying, I'm looking for the derivative with respect to x of f of sine of x. So I'm taking big F and I'm putting sine in, and that gives me exactly that. Well, that's going to be a chain rule. And so we know this times the derivative of the inside guy. Uh-huh, okay, well, let's just wait on that. Derivative of sine x is cosine x. F prime of sine of x, well, we already figured out F prime, so now we just need to come in here and put in the sine of x part. And there we go. And if you do this problem, go ahead and think about, well, what happens if I change the sine x to something else? You know, what, what is derivative with respect to x of 3 to the x cubed of natural law of 3 plus t to the fourth dt? Well, a little bit of, of work, you're just saying the same thing, right? This is just saying what's the derivative with respect to x of big F of x cubed, which we know is F prime of x cubed times uh, 3x squared, the derivative of the inside guy. So that is natural log of 3 plus x cubed to the fourth times 3x squared. And after you do a couple of these, you'll get familiar and comfortable enough with the idea that you're doing the same thing. It's just a chain rule. You're going to take this upper limit and you're going to pop it in where you see the variable in your integrand, but then you're going to pick up the derivative of that inside guy or that upper limit, um, which we're thinking of as the inside guy in our chain rule out here because of the chain rule. Thanks for listening.